Welcome to The Achievers, where we find and elevate the stories of brilliant people. Today, we're going north of the border up to Toronto to meet a company with a very interesting take on out-of-home advertising. Red Dragon, Casey Binkley, welcome to the show. Thanks very much, Dax. Great to be here. Uh, Love what you're doing at The Achievers and uh, to everybody that's listening and out there. Nice to meet you and welcome. Great. Thank you, Casey. Um, Tell us about Movia and what you're doing. Awesome. Uh, So yeah, Movia, we have been around for five, almost six years now. I, uh, I'm a bit of a serial entrepreneur. I'll kind of black plate a little bit, give you a little bit of story leading up to it. So I was in the manufacturing homebrew equipment. We manufactured plastic homebrew equipment in Michigan and China. We sold the products in roughly around 1400 retail stores across 45 countries. Uh, bootstrapped that company with another partner pretty much right out of university. Uh, we built it for five years, very successful business and had a lot of fun doing it, but I was starting to get to the point where I was looking for the next, what my next step was going to be. Again, homebrew is great, but it's a small market. There's like four, maybe 5 million people in the whole world that homebrew. And then the other thing is I was doing a little bit too much drinking. <laughs> so I was sampling the, the supply a little bit. You could say that. Um, so I was in kind of idea formulation and I can remember it or this moment will always stick with me, but I was driving back from Detroit to Toronto. It's about a five hour drive. I was on the highway, had a blank truck go past, had a truck with an ad on it, had another blank truck. And I just thought to myself, wow, there is a lot of blank trucks out there. And that is amazing advertising real estate. Cause I'm certainly looking at it and I'm paying attention. So if I am, other people are. So I came back and did a bit of research and I found that there was only maybe three to four companies in the space in general. Um, And a lot of it came down to analytics, accountability and measurement. So baseline, we do truck side advertising. We partner with trucking companies that are already out making general deliveries and we wrap their trucks with ads for other brands such as Chobani, Casper, Valori, clothing, explore Georgia, very large plethora. Um, but it's unused advertising space that we're turning into, you know, something that looks spectacular. But I realized Im- immediately that there needed to be some sort of measurement accountability going on. So we have a patented beacon technology. We have two US granted patents and a Canadian patent so far. Um, but basically we have a hardware device that goes on each drug does two things. One, it's a GPS, so we know location. But the cool thing we do is impression analytics through Wi-Fi and Bluetooth measurement. Most people leave their Wi-Fi or Bluetooth on. So as the truck drives around, we're picking up the available Wi-Fi signals. We know what devices, phones have come in contact with the trucks, where and at what time. We report this to the clients on a live customer dashboard so somebody can log in know exactly where the truck was, know how many people saw it, what time of day, how frequency, pretty much the full gamut. So that's kind of like our our baseline standard. Any campaign that we do gets outfitted with all this measurement, accountability, attribution tech. Um, But the second phase, we pair this data into online programmatic and we serve, serve digital ads back out on two devices through apps such as Facebook, Instagram, the weather network. So trucks are gonna be seen by everyone, but when we do the retargeting, that can go to a select target demo. So say it's males, 25 to 35 years old, household income of 80 to 120,000. So again, they're gonna see the trucks. And then later when they're on Facebook, Instagram, the weather network, ESN, TSN, we can serve them digital banner ads. And through that, we can now track, did they click the ad? Did they go on and sign up to the the website, the newsletter? Did they actually purchase something? So we're tracking the consumer journey all the way from seeing a truck ad, all the way into a website shopping cart to see what the actual action was. I love it. I want to clarify the format of the truck ad because certainly some people will have seen trucks driving by, particularly if they've been somewhere like Vegas, where the truck really is just a truck that looks like two billboards stuck together in an A-frame. That's not what we're talking about here, right? With someone like Casper, it looks like it's a Casper delivery truck. Great question. And thanks for clarifying. Yeah, there's what in the industry we call it dedicated and non-dedicated. 
So dedicated truck would be like what you see in Vegas, the, the thin trucks or the digital trucks that are out in market. So those trucks, their only purpose for being on the road is to serve advertising. So they're a dedicated advertising truck, which is great, but it's typically kind of short, shorter durations, very hyper-targeted maybe to like a special event or get them out to like uh, the stadium when a, when a sporting event comes out. Our trucks, we work with working delivery trucks. So these, we have different kind of trucks in our fleet, but some of our trucks are actually Amazon residential delivery trucks. So they're in and out of residential neighborhoods all day long. So if somebody sees a truck that's driving through residential neighborhood wrapped as Casper, they're gonna, they're gonna think, hey, there's the Casper delivery truck out in market. Um, we also have some other routes just because we're on touching on this, but we do like food service. So trucks that are delivering to uh, grocery stores, gas stations, convenience stores, bars and restaurants. So kind of that retail CPG. We've got like downtown urban routes that are B2B. So office towers, commercial buildings, industrial centers. And then we actually even touch into rural, um, like small towns or rural residences still need stuff delivered to them. Out of home can be very hard to buy in small towns because there's not a lot of billboards. There's not a lot of options. Mm. Uh, but some of our network, these delivery trucks are hitting lots of rural areas. So um, we cover a very wide gamut. I've seen the Casper campaign example. It looks great. So I can imagine if I saw that, I would think, my God, Casper's out delivering mattresses to all, all sorts of people in my neighborhood. I need to go check out this Casper thing, right? That's got to be the advantage over a dedicated Exactly. It starts to kind of create this community engagement brand extension play where, you know, if you're driving down the the highway and you see a billboard on the side of the road, you know that that's a paid ad. Mm. But when you see a working delivery truck in market, you don't necessarily think that's a paid ad. You think, oh, there's that company's delivery truck out in market actually serving a purpose. So it starts to make the brand such as Casper larger than they may be seen because now they're out in market delivering mattresses, being a part of the community. Yeah. The other thing that kind of spins into this is we get a ton of driver engagement. So <laughs> people associate that driver with Casper, whoever the brand is, they get excited about the ad, they want to come up and talk to the driver. So we actually get our drivers outfitted with custom handouts. So as people do the engagement, there's a there's a takeaway on spot. And when the drivers are doing Amazon package drop-offs, they're also leaving the plot the flyers at the same time. So I'd like to think like the human element really sets us apart from a lot of other out of home. Yeah. The Amazon piece is really interesting because lots of people are trying to get into that sort of final mile with Amazon. When you're working with these Amazon trucks, are these Amazon owned fleets or are these contracted companies that Amazon uses and therefore it's their own vehicles and can do what they want? So a little bit of both. Um, We are currently in the process we've been working with amazon's head office now for about six months on a partnership that's in the final stages but not superficial so i can't share too many details yep Uh, they're certainly aware of what we're doing uh on their trucks but mostly it's third parties so amazon certainly owns you know a lot of vehicles but in the grand scheme of things they only own a small portion of their actual fleet most of the deliveries are done by third party logistics companies. And those are the companies that we we partner with. Okay. I'm fascinated by the beacon um, piece of this. So I don't think a lot of people would realize, but as their phone is transmitting Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, that you can really get much from that. I understand the device count. That sort of makes, uh, I think, a lot of sense. As you're driving through a built-up area and that beacon is picking those up, what sort of percentage of devices do you think it can see in time as it's driving around? So when we're picking up from the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, like we're in a, a very regulated space in terms oh. of privacy and security. So we need to be on the hot most of what we are collecting or doing with data. Um, so on the, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, this is very anonymized data. Uh, basically what happens when your phone's Wi-Fi or Bluetooth is on, your phone's in what's called search mode. So it's looking for available networks. So when you walk down the street and you see Starbucks and then McDonald's and then the Hyatt Hotel, all these different networks popping up, that's your phone searching. 
When it's in search mode, it's sending out what's called a MAC address, which is basically a serial number that's tied to your phone's Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, but it's totally anonymous. There's no personal identifiers. I don't know that it's Dax's phone and Dax's right. age. It's literally just a serial number. So our device grabs this, collects this serial number, and we know the time and location. So we're really, we don't have any more insights as to like who it was, but we can verify that an impression did happen that somebody was there because again, we've grabbed this MAC address. Yeah. We pair this into the online retargeting portion doing the banner ads. This is where we can access demo and it comes through apps. So when somebody downloads Facebook, Instagram, the weather network on their phone and you hit accept, when you hit accept, you are now giving that app permission to know your location data, your gender data, potentially age, your kind of spending habits. So like, again, when you download these apps, you opt in for advertising that's targeted to what your demo is. So when we pair that, our data into that, we can start to pull up insights and you know, get specific as to where the digital ads are going out to. Right. And I just really want to clarify that because I think for the people who are watching this and are very familiar with the out of home piece, um, obviously may have concerns about the data piece, but really what we're saying here is to clarify the two different distinct data sets, what Facebook have is things like age and other demographics, and you are giving Facebook permission to allow people to run ads against that data. That is one side of it. That is not your data. That is everything that's happening inside of Facebook, and that allows all Facebook advertising. I think what's great about what you're doing with the Movia beacons is all you are collecting is that anonymous serial number. It is then when you're doing the campaign, you're saying, go find out all these serial number people and then Facebook allow me to layer on the data you've already got so I can narrow it down to the relevant ones, right? Exactly. Okay. And from a privacy, like security issue, like what we do is very widespread. Like our technology is used in most like shopping retail. So like when you yeah. walk into a Starbucks, they're doing the same thing. They're, they're knowing that there was a device in that store that time and location. Yeah. Walmart does it with Beacon technology. Most major shopping centers do it. And the industry's actually pivoted. Uh, well, some companies have pivoted into doing uh, security with it. So they'll have like a large office tower and they'll set beacons up in it so that their security teams can monitor. They know that the device came on the property. So there's kind of a few different applications for what we do. It's Unique for us and what our our patent and patent covers is the moving aspect. So we're the the leader in moving beacon technology doing this measurement. That's really that's really interesting. So what sort of what sort of advertisers use this the most? Do you have sort of specific categories that are drawn to it? So I wish I could say, well, I maybe don't wish I could say, cause it's nice that we're broad. Um, but yeah, we, we do a lot of like retail CPG. So like big box retailers, Walmart uh, was, uh, did a great campaign in Atlanta last year with us with one of their retailers called the Cookware Company. Um, we work in kind of like the direct consumer category as well. Casper has been a great client. Uh, Valori is a great client. We did an awesome, uh, so Glory's the active clothing wear. They're launching in-store locations right now, so brick and mortar. We supported two of their store launches in LA last fall. Went extremely well. They had a lot of feedback that people were seeing the trucks. They looked very sharp. Uh, they've renewed this year. We're, long, we're supporting 10 new brick and mortar, brick and mortar store openings across 10 different markets. So. There is uh, Boston and Austin have been live. We're live in Palo Alto right now. So we're kind of layering it on throughout the year. Uh, we also work in like travel. So pre-COVID travel was a big category for us. It's certainly been down in COVID, but it's oh. seen a rebound in that right now. Uh, lottery's been a great, great uh, vertical for us. And then the entertainment space that I touch on as well. Um, did you watch the Equalizer TV show that came out last year? It was with Queen Latifah. 
I remember the old one, but I did not see the one last year. Cool. It was a bit of a big deal because the Equalizer, their kind of remake, but then yeah. the star of the show was Queen Latifah, so it got a lot of, uh, but a cool case study. So we ran a campaign in Toronto for to help with this TV premiere, and we launched 12 trucks. Toronto's a fairly large city. It's 6 million people, so we're, we're a decent size. So we had 12 trucks over seven weeks. The data was taken from a third party, Nielsen and Cadle did our brand lift study. So a third party, an email that went out across the GTA, we ended up with a 31.4% unhated recall. Wow. So it's basically like saying 2 million people could remember seeing the trucks without an actual visual aid. It was just ingrained in their it's head. It's remarkable. Like, yeah, very incredible. Like, Recall. Well, what was the creative like on the truck? I mean, was it something pretty great that really stood out? So it was cool. To be honest, it actually surprised me. I remember when I first saw the creative, I was like, oh, really? Like, okay. <laughs> it was it was black. So the trucks were like quite dark. And then there was like this big, bold image of Queen Latifah kind of standing there. Um, and to me, it kind of looked dark or whatnot. But I will say we ran the campaign kind of during the winter months. So with a lot of snow on the ground, it actually really popped quite well when it when it went live. So just I think having Queen Latifah on the trucks, the kind of contrast with black and white, it, it did actually pop quite well. Um, so great recall. But the other two numbers that were extremely impressive was the intent to actually action, in this case, intent to watch the show. Mm. So 78% of people that walk that saw the trucks watched one episode or more. So great number there. But the most impressive number, I think, is from a broadcast point of view, they're looking for that long-term viewer. So they want to know that they've watched at least two or more episodes. So our two episodes or more was 53% of people that saw the trucks. So That's it's almost unheard of in TV numbers for something like this. I thought it was unbelievable because we went 6 million people a third of them could remember seeing it, so two million, and of that two million, 53% watched two or more episodes, basically yeah. over a million people. It's like extremely outstanding. That's wild. So that's a Toronto example, and obviously you're based in Toronto. What area do you cover? What sort of parts of the US or Canada can people do campaigns with you? So we're nationwide. We're anywhere continental US or Canada. Um, we haven't done a campaign in Alaska yet, but we do have inventory up there as well as uh, Hawaii. So pretty much anywhere U.S. or Canada, we're ready to go. Um, we've had some inquiries into Mexico, but we haven't executed in Mexico. I think it's only a matter of time. And if anybody wants, we do have a, a logistics partner set up in Europe. We, have, again, haven't executed in Europe, but we do have inventory and we're ready to go in Europe. That's fantastic. And then finally, on the question of the creative, um, you generally get the creative from the client or are you also helping to solve that problem? So we're going to provide best practices, but typically the client would have an in-house creative team or they're using a creative agency that they would produce the, the creative with. Okay. We provide templated styles and all the specs and then... Uh, their team would kind of do it. And again, we would definitely provide best practices. Um, and then occasionally we do have clients that are keen to explore 3D graphics. Mm. So if you get a really good 3D designer, it can make the life or the ad look like it's kind of like that 3D effect. Uh, it's same static printing. It doesn't change costing wise, but the creative process is a lot different. So if we do have access to a 3D designer to kind of help with the specs or mocks that if the client doesn't have access, because the 3D design, it's kind of like a uh, video game designer is kind of what you're, you're looking for. Yeah, I saw some examples on your, uh, of, on your side of some suggestions. I think there was a beer bottle laying inside the truck, right? And the 3D graphic makes it look like the truck is see-through. So it really looks like you've got a flatbed truck kind of with a uh, with a giant beer bottle laying on the back of it. I mean, that's you wouldn't you could not not notice that if that was driving near you on the high street. It's very memorable, and I think like 
you know, it kind of goes back to two numbers that kind of that I have stuck with me all the way through. When I first started doing my research after that inception day, uh, the two numbers that really stood out to me. So moving billboards compared to static billboards get two times the amount of impressions. And it's because that moving billboard is driving around all day, actually going to impressions where that static billboard sits on the highway. It has to wait until people come to it. So it's like basically two times the amount of impressions. Yeah. But then the other number that's always also stood out to me is a moving billboard compared to static gets two times the retention rates. And it just has to do with like how your brain processes yeah. something that's sitting on the side of the road compared to moving beside you. Like that moving truck, you kind of have to pay attention to it so you don't drive into it. When you're kind of doing that glance, that's, you know, that's you checking out that ad numerous times. Yeah. So in my opinion, it's kind of like a full 4X multiple on it. You get two times the amount of impressions and then you get two times the retention. So like from an effectiveness point of view, I think it's, you know, it's kind of like 4, 4X. Yeah, I, I like that piece of it because one of the things that our brains, of course, spend most time doing is trying to forget stuff, right? Because we are constantly, I'm sitting here now in the Achiever's office and there's all sorts of things around me. I, if I think now there's a printer out of the corner of my eye to my right, I don't need to be always looking and acknowledging the printer, right? So the brain's getting that from the eye and saying, forget it, forget it, forget it. But I will tell you that one of my four kids ran past a few minutes ago and that caught my eye, right? So anything that's moving tells your brain brain, this is an exception. Something's changed. You have to pay attention to it. And I think that's where a lot of that recognition and recall comes from. hundred percent. And as a brand, like, you know, everything's just so cluttered at this point. Mm. So the average, like the number, the stat that I've been schooled on, like each person every day is they'll see roughly interact with roughly 3,700 ads in a single day. So it might be a TV commercial, it might be a radio commercial, but it might just be like walking down the street, seeing that Honda logo on the car and then you get Ford logo. So every time you look at something, that's an interaction with the brand. So on average, 3,700 ads a day, somebody is exposed to. So unless you're doing something a little bit out of the box, big and bold, like really meaningful, it's very easy to get lost in the clutter. Yeah, for sure. This is great. Um, where can people come find out more about your solutions? So best place to check us out is on our website. Uh, we're www.movia, M-O-V-I-A dot media. Movia is actually moving and media combined into one word. So a little bit there. So you did there. <laughs> Working on it. Um, but yeah, and if anybody wants to reach out, my direct email is just Casey, C-A-S-E-Y at movia.media and we'd love to chat about uh, anything upcoming and if you know anybody again even in the logistics space if you're not looking to do ads but you know somebody that has box trucks that potentially would i mean this is a revenue share model they're not putting ads on their trucks for free so if you know anybody with trucks uh happy to get in touch maybe there's a opportunity in that sense that's fantastic. And if you're listening on the podcast, you'll find those links that uh, Casey talked about in the show notes. And if you're watching on YouTube, they are in the description below. Casey, an absolute pleasure. Congratulations on being a great achiever. Movi is a, a fantastic solution. Thanks, Dax. Really appreciate being here. And uh, to the Achiever community, keep doing well. And uh, I'm sure you'll end up on Dax's show sooner, sooner than later. <laughs> <laughs>